Wait, Attention, no, due to the nature no, of the film no, discussed, no. the Civil War podcast may contain adult language and themes. Hey everybody, we hope you're having a fabulous October. This is your host, Tim, and this is Civil Gore, episode 31. And this is Brian, and, and that could not be more appropriate number, right? Because, of course, everyone knows what that, you know, our Christmas is this month, essentially, on October 31st. <laughs> so this is couldn't have been a better uh, timed episode to be number 31 going into October after our exciting Steve Timber. Right. So we are actually recording this on September 30th. So our October has not quite started yet, but you'll be getting this episode on October 6th. So hopefully you're already out there hitting some haunts and doing some fun, scary stuff. Yeah, this this is unusual. This is uh, due, due to the uh, my my uh, trip that I'm, I'm taking to, out to California. Uh, so we're so we, we but we did not want to miss uh an episode. And it's kind of funny because this might be the one of the first times literally we'll be recording a new episode while the other one is simultaneously being released. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Dude. Yeah, that one that one's dropping tonight actually as we speak. Yeah, which is which is kind of funny and surreal. So it's like you could we could actually listen to our, our own new episode while recording a new episode if we if we <laughs> if we so choose. But <laughs> well, I am uh the sound you're about to hear hmm. is me popping open a dogfish head pumpkin ale. Nice. Which is pretty good. It's pretty good. It's not my favorite pumpkin beer, of course, of the season, but it's it's not bad. And it's one of the few I could find at my local grocery store, which has been really slack this year about getting their pumpkin beers in. I see what you did there. But I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They. Uh, yeah. No, it's it's funny because everyone – you get these pe- – there's like two sides, right? You get people like us that love pumpkin everything, and then there's the people that seem to get annoyed with – with pumpkin everything, but obviously we're winning because if Tim had so much trouble finding his pumpkin beer, what is that? That tells <laughs> you people are out there. And speaking of that, I do have a new, uh, a new item that I've discovered. And for our hashtag pumpkin is the bacon of the fall. It's pumpkin frosted mini wheats. Yes. And I looked for those this weekend and they were wiped out. I mean, Walmart had a giant hole where they were supposed to be, and they were gone. Oh, and I don't. I tell you, when you try one, you'll know why. These, this by far, out of all, and I, now I've tried about six different pumpkin cereals this year. This by far is the best one. This is one I wish they like literally had all year because it's so good. I mean, you know, it's got that sweetness that the frosted mini wheats have, but with that full on pumpkin spice flavor. I was just eating them out of the box actually earlier, not even putting it in a bowl. <laughs> that's how that's how good it is. So good that I'm not even gonna put it into my pumpkin mega mix. I want it by itself. Oh wow, yeah. that's that's pretty uh, pretty high praise. Indeed. Yeah, and so yeah, so Tim, you need to get yourself a, a box of that because oh, I'm looking, I'm on the prowl. Yeah, that. I saw it at Target. Target had an end okay. cap fill of like about four to four or five different other pumpkin cereals, and that was like right in the Target's, middle. Targets, yeah, Targets usually pretty good for finding like the weird flavor stuff. Like they they usually always they have like M and M exclusives and yeah. Oreo exclusives and stuff like that. So I'll, yeah, I'll try that next time I'm out there. Yeah, because and and I remember it was like right on the end cap, and I wasn't even looking for that that day, but they were, they knew where to find me, you know. <laughs> of course, <laughs> they knew I would be walking by, and I so I had to uh to had of course I had to get that. And I and the best thing about Target is with those they they are usually like same like two ninety nine a box of cereal for almost every cereal they can sell there. So it's great. So this week we're doing something a little different because we are we don't have a movie this week. We're just going to talk about haunts and kind of do this kind of our October preview episode of, of what we're going to be excited for in October and the things that we have planned. So let's get right into it with our first chop. I just came back from something really fun. Uh, that's kind of we were, I was actually late getting uh, getting in place for the recording. I went to a dead celebrity themed birthday party and this was for our good friend amanda who ah. you heard on our jaws episode Jaws super fan amanda yeah jaws super fan so she always has fantastic themed birthday parties she does she had a harry potter one last year right yeah she had a harry potter yeah. one she's had a walking dead one she's had a lost one um this one it was a dead celebrity it could be any dead celebrity fictional or non-fictional um and so i went as macho man randy savage Nice. And my wife, Olivia, went as Amy Winehouse. 
and it was it was just a blast. Uh, they actually had um, a red carpet with tombstones lining the red carpet as you walked in, and we also had a Kevin made a fantastic cake. <laughs> I wish you could see this. I've got pictures. Yeah, on. I was gonna I'll say post them on Instagram. Gotta post those. But it's it's an it's an R.I.P. cake, and it has various ways that celebrities have died. So it had like a Hot Wheels car stuck in it, razor blades, pill bottles. Oh my god, that's awesome! <laughs> okay. Well, it, it seems like incredible. they touched you and Olivia's characters. Yeah, yeah with the pill bottle exactly. in the car, but <laughs> yeah. So uh, it was it was absolutely incredible. We had a really good time. Um, Joshua went as Batman, and Anna went as Zombie Bride, uh. which <laughs> aren't technically dead. I get well, the zombie was she's not necessarily a celebrity, but she's dead and. Maybe some people could argue Batman's career is dead. I right. Don't, I don't believe. Well, that. you know, I mean, yeah, it's also. Yeah, I th- haven't there been very storylines where he's he's been killed off or something. So I don't probably, know, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> jo- Joshua could just be way ahead of his time. You know, we don't know what's coming in the next couple of movies, right? That's right. So yeah, he, exactly. he may just be on on point. I, I met him. He's a smart kid. I know. <laughs> he's probably just foreseeing. Oh, and I f- and I feel like I should, even though I I, I uh, put this on her Facebook page as a happy birthday. Uh, we we do have our our good friend Richard Dreyfus came by to wish Amanda happy oh birthday. My. So, hello Amanda, happy birthday! So okay, that was <laughs> now that you all had to suffer through that. <laughs> yeah, we had a a very lively Jaws discussion while I was at the party. By the way, um, so we were with a with a fellow Jaws enthusiast that I met. Uh, at the party, so that was really oh, cool. Oh, speaking of Jaws, I'll go, I know this is not on our rundown and segue, but, um, and I know I told you that I was doing it, but if you guys have not yet downloaded the Jaws pinball table, wow, that thing is addicting. I spent three hours straight the other night trying to start, try and do all the, because there's different things you can unlock and, and move around and little tasks, and I could not, I like, there was one I just could not do, because supposedly you gotta get Quint over to jump on the ledge, and then you knock him over or something when the shark comes out, but, couldn't figure that one out, but there's a lot of cool little like effects on that table. Like, there's one where if you hit the right thing, it goes to night mode, and his flashlight's shining around. You got to hit the ball where his flashlight's pointing to get points. Oh, that's yeah. Cool. And one of the coolest things is when um at one point when uh, I guess Jaws grabs the uh, too many of those buoys. I don't. Know, I gotta I, or the barrels. I got Steve Cohen. Will, have to fill us in on this one again but there's something you do and anyway and basically so the whole table starts rocking like the boat so your your ball is like falling all over the place and you're trying to like hit it and it, so you can kind of nudge the table to kind of cap but it's oh my god it's so it's such a cool table you know for that well, i went to download it today and i realized that they have like an et yeah table. and back to future they've got all kind con- yeah back to the future so I, I might have to get all of those because they had some really good universal Table theme tables that were really yeah, good. and it was. I think I saw a Walking Dead one. There was this. It's pretty much like a. I, you could drop like twenty bucks and getting all these tables here, but yeah. that Jaws table for sure is worth it. That you know what with Universal behind it, how great would like a classic Monsters table be? Yeah, they need to do that. Cool. Like a you know would, all the classic ones, that. like the you know Tim's favorite Creature of the Black Lagoon, the Wolfman, all that stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. I saw a. Uh, I went to the comic book show i guess i'll go ahead and it was later on the rundown but i guess i'll go ahead and mention it because they had a creature from the black lagoon the little uh reaction figures oh right right that series came yeah, out. yeah. they had one of those i didn't buy it because it was a little bit too pricey but i really really wanted it because um that series I, I just missed out on the classic monster series but you could keep uh, an eye out though they sometimes you can get them cheaper like you can still find yeah, them yeah. sometimes this, this was this was like a toy and comic show and some of the it was mostly toys so a lot of the prices on their toys were a little high for me um but i did get some great comic books i got i decided you know what i'm just gonna hit the dollar bins and i'm gonna take every horror comic they've got in the dollar bin that's my <laughs> goal for today so i found an almost complete set of interview with a vampire oh wow adaptation uh about half a set of the vampire lestat and then the really cool find, those were kind of, yeah, whatever. The really cool find was a guy had a half price sticker box and basically he had taken half off of the original cost and then was taking half off of that. So I was getting these for around a dollar fifty two bucks a piece and it was a ton of 1970s horror comics. I got some called, uh, the, the name of the series is Unexpected. 
I think it's unexpected. And the other one was Ghosts. And there was even one that was a Boris Karloff House of Mystery or something like that. But I got a stack of maybe 15 or 20 of those. Oh, nice. So, uh, Seemed like you hit the mother load there. Yeah, it was really exciting because uh, the guy gave me a really good deal on it. And they're just really, really cool. They're, they're all from nineteen around the 73 to 76 range. And they're and then they're in pretty decent shape. So, uh, and, I, and I got a bo- short box to to put them all in. So I was really excited about that. And Kevin, actually, I had given him all of my old DC Wildstorm um, back in 2006. They did a series of Friday Thirteenth, Nightmare on Elm Street, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre comics. I uh, I had given them away to Kevin like many years ago. That was when I just didn't have room for a lot of comics and stuff. And I didn't want to trash him, obviously. Yeah, so yeah. I gave them to him. Well, he, you know, now that I got back into the podcast and all that, he gave them back to me. <laughs> so I've got those so all. You got some freebies, uh, too. Got some freebies. So I got all those, that series. And I'm just going to, you know, try to fill in the last couple I need for each of those. But uh, yeah, really exciting. Really good haul today for, in the old uh, horror comic front. Nice. Yeah, I had. I think I, I showed you. I had some Friday the 13th. I don't know if they're part of that series you mentioned. But I remember mm-hmm. I had a couple. I had one that was like a little two parter, where it was about some little kid, I guess, that was also kind of deformed like Jason and was picked on. And so Jason kind of almost like, kind of like adopted him a little bit <laughs> in it. Interesting. Yeah. And it was like some, some uh, really like uh, corrupt sheriff involved in it that kind of ended up getting his comeuppance at the end. But uh, I think it was called like How I Spent My Summer. And it was like a t- little two parter one. It was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. They did some like little short run series here and there. So I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to get all of those at some point. They even have a child's play series that I d- never knew that they had done. Yeah. I didn't, I never, uh, I don't think I knew that either. Which, I mean, it wasn't the, it wasn't the DC Wildstorm ones, but it, it was a separate series. But um, I think it, they did that in conjunction with one of the movies, one of the sequels coming out. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, those are fun because I like seeing the characters in situations you've never seen them in before because they're obviously not – they never made a movie about some of these side adventures. So. Yeah, and I would love to, to do more of that. Like, you know, like, you know, we kind of always joke about it, like that like expanded universe kind of thing. That would be – I, I wish they would just do more of that stuff, more novels and stuff, you know. I mean, I know they did a bunch yeah. of Friday the 13th, but they were kind of like teen novels. Yeah, I mean, I guess I don't know. I guess there's, I would, I would buy. Yeah. I, I guess there's a market for it, but I would, I would definitely. I, 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 I guess it's kind of hard to like do slashers in, in book form, though. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Some yeah. degree, maybe have to be comics or you know what? I mean, I, I think they really should just. I mean, now that the video game and is getting, you know, get, getting such uh, uh, notoriety and everything, they they really should just do like campaign modes on that, and you just kind of base storylines off of that, you know. But we'll we'll yeah. see. They, who knows what you know what's in store? That's the thing. It's like exciting times, you know, because you never know. You know, you know horror is big now with it, which obviously officially passed. I guess I saw the Exorcist officially now. Oh really? Yeah. Cool. I saw yeah. a post. A you know, I remember we were kind of hesitant to mention it last time because of the inflation thing. But someone posted a couple of days ago. They said now it officially had passed, even with the nice. inflation. So that's. That's, of course, exciting because, you know, I mean, for horror fans like us, I mean, that's why I think we knew we we had to do the podcast this year. We saw this coming, right? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And then we have some really big news coming up soon. This thing has jumped right on top of me. Uh, We have a big meetup planned, right, Brian? Yeah, so we're going to we're going to be down uh, at Bush Gardens Howlow Scream in Williamsburg, Virginia, which is, um, I, I got a preview of the event. I went, I was there last week. I didn't really talk about too much of it because Tim hasn't been there but yet. But I could just say that um, the little taste of it that I got, we are going to be in for a treat. It is just a fantastic event. You know, I mean, you know you've been to like Fry Fest at Six Flags. But this, this park, just the way it's set up. Just screams, no pun intended, or a pun intended, <laughs> uh, for this kind of event because there's a lot of lush greenery around and there's little like nooks and and corners and stuff. So it's like this thing is just set up for this stuff. And they they have about um, they have seven uh, rooms actually. Uh, sorry, seven haunt. Uh, yeah, seven haunts and then two escape rooms 
as they call the no escape rooms. But those are done a little differently from what I imagine. We got a walkthrough of them. We didn't really do the whole escape room experience. They just kind of walked us in. It looks like it's one of those ones where there's an actor in it. So I think he guides you because anyone that's done an escape room knows usually it's an hour long commitment and you're in there and you really don't get many hints. This, I have a feeling, obviously, for the to get the more throughput of people, probably is done in a little bit differently in a much more it, modified... It may be like that... Um, Do you remember that skeleton key we did, Brian, That where you were like, that vampire was trapped? Right. That's actually more what it seemed like to me. It, it's actually... And I, I was telling Julie when we went in there, I said... Because she was already, like, looking around, trying to... Just, just for fun to see where, what kind of clues there would be in there, and that's what I kind of said. I said, you know, it kind of reminded me of the skeleton rooms that you get at at the Cedar Fair parks, where there's those little extra mm-hmm. uh, things. And well, obviously, we we but we do have to tell that story at some point, but th- not this show. Maybe our total haunt centric show about the our <laughs> our experience in the haunt uh, with yeah. with our good friend Pooh Man. <laughs> because <laughs> that is a classic but i'm uh, sorry I, I know i teased it for you but you have to wait um yeah. but yeah so there's a lot of a lot of good stuff there and we may even have uh some uh surprises for you based from that that meetup but right now there's going to be actually a, an episode is going to drop the day of the meetup so it's going to be the episode that drops on the 20th that should have some uh meetup stuff from it yeah that should be i cannot wait i'm so excited because i I have been to Bush Gardens Williamsburg once before. I did not get to ride any roller coasters at that time. So uh, I'm really looking forward to, you know, basically experiencing the park from a coaster fan perspective. Because when I, when I went before, I was not a coaster fan. And then especially the haunt, because I have not done the haunt at all. Oh, yeah. And, and, and you, I think you'll, I mean, not just the rooms and just the, you know, the typical like scare zones they have. There's just some little cool little, uh, decorations i'll say that are i have not seen yet done that that kind of way at a haunt which is pretty cool so it's i know it was i mean it was just especially at night when it's uh when it gets really dark there it gets it gets dark kind of fast just based on i guess either the location and the way there's a lot of it's like i said encompassed by trees and stuff so that's really cool and plus the best part is they, they like add even extra little bars out there so you know, anyone that's been to Bush Gardens, they know that they they the oh beer is flowing there, but they also have a lot of, some other mixed drinks. But and it's great because they literally let you walk around with the beer. So it's like I remember when Julie and I were waiting for for Bolton. I had we were we were finishing up our nice beers we got at the uh, that uh, oh god I always butcher the name that beer house or whatever it's called um, <laughs> over right by it. So yeah, it should it should be fun. And I'm gonna make a prediction. I predicted this. Uh, Amongst our friends, but I'll, I'll predict this now on Civil Gore, so Tim can come back and tell you if I'm right. I think Tim's favorite ride at Bush Gardens will be Verbolton. That is my prediction. All right, we'll so, see. We'll see. It's got the theming he likes. It's got speed. It's got thrills. So I think that's nice. going to be his uh, his my, my pick for Tim's favorite. Tim's pick of the yeah. week will be Verbolton. <laughs> well, let's get on to some like some real hard right. news. Uh, a, a big one this year, Robert. Uh, this year, this uh, week, uh, Robert England gave his endorsement for Kevin Bacon to play Freddy Krueger. Yeah, which is weird because there's nothing really announced yet as a new movie <laughs> or anything. It was kind of a random endorsement, but you know, I can I can kind of see it. I can kind of. Oh, it. I, I, yeah, no, I absolutely could see. And and I read the article. I don't know if you read the whole full article, but basically was saying how. You know, the guy, the guy that Rodona was saying how, if you think about it, right, Kevin Bacon, his first film was Friday the 13th, so it's a right. horror movie, and he is, he's not one that's, like, ashamed of it. He's very proud of it. He he does not try and hide the fact. He's been in some other horror movies, so he's got his horror cred, and he plays that, can play that, like, sinister type of, uh, you know, that character while also being kind of... Uh, you know, kind of like, you know, a little bit of comical, like the tongue in cheek, like Robert Englund did, obviously, for Freddie. Right, yeah. And I think it's a great Yeah, I, and and now remember, like, we always, I always got want to say, because, and, and this article went in to say that, too. It said, like, n- you know, everyone says kind of the same thing we did. Nothing against Jack Earl Haley's performance, because that was, it was fantastic. It just, they said the movie itself was not good. So, and that's kind of what yeah. they were saying. So, it's like. You know, they, they you know they really wanted to say like you know okay yeah we want Kevin Bacon to do it but but it's not because Jack Earl really stunk or anything you know it's just a, a just that's what Robert Englund said and apparently I, the article kind of said that he was approached by it and he was he'd be into it so if the, I guess if this thing happens I think it's coming because 
if Halloween, if the Halloween reboot is a success and the Friday the 13th reboot actually makes it off the ground, we still kind of iffy on yeah. that one. But there's no way they're not going to capitalize on the Freddy license and not redo that. I mean, despite, I mean, despite the, the poor reception of the remake, I just have a feeling the license is just too strong that they'll have to do something with right, it. Right, and the fact that Robert Englund is, is kind of endorsing it and behind it almost kind of gives it a little bit more like, okay, you know, because I think a lot of people still felt like, well, it's not Robert Englund, it's not Freddy, but yeah. if he's actually saying like, no, okay, I want this guy to play Freddy, then it may get a little uh, bit, uh, you know, give, give a little more pop to it. But it's kind of funny, like, do you think there's going to be any elements of like, you know, any musical dancing in it, you know, anything Footloose or anything in there? I don't know. I don't Kevin know. Kevin Bacon, you know, I don't know. You, you you know, he does have the musical chops, so he could uh <laughs> that would be an interesting take on it, right? I don't know. Yeah. Mm. We'll have to see. We we'll have to follow that I one. I got to think about that one. That might be a Kickstarter. I know. In the making. Yeah, it's like a nightmare on Footloose. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think that's a nightmare that pe- that you and I have already spent more than 10 seconds talking about. Such a right. poorly yeah, exactly. <laughs> planned joke that didn't didn't hit. <laughs> but <laughs> Well, uh, I was about to say speaking of something, but then I realized I had no segue. But anyway, um, TV news. You you had watched something on, I, and I actually just added one to the rundown of something I saw really cool. So uh, why don't you talk about evil things? Yeah, so this um, this is, a, it was funny. The way we discovered this show is, is uh, my wife and I like to watch, like the, we used to watch that show, The Dead Files, on, uh, on a Travel Channel. And... You know, there was so the, I guess we were flipping through the uh, the TV one night, and we got to this, which kind of looked uh, this other show called uh, Kindred Spirits. It kind of looks like it, which is one of those things where they have two paranormal experts go in there to a house and they record it. And this one's a little different because they actually record the thing and then play it back live. And there was one where it was kind of creepy, where they said, uh, like it said something like. Stop making noise or something like that. Where they heard it, you kind of made it sound like it. I mean, whether or not you take that, all those shows with a grain of salt. But <laughs> anyway, so getting getting to the thing. So after that show came on, I was kind of like, well, the other one's okay, but I kind of like the Dead Files better. But but then this show came on called Evil Things, and this is more of the traditional where it's almost like you know uh, one of those shows where they just show the a, a per person and then they do the reenactment so they're talking and then they show the reenactment and the reenactments are like done with really uh solid effects and it, and it does it does it in a really uh good creepy manner and but the the funny thing is is and this is what Julie said I try to hopefully get her words right with this where it was even the the real people kind of look like they were like almost like uh, not enhanced, but like coached and produced little to like almost have to, to kind of like sound as sinister as possible. <laughs> it's kind of funny because it's like you don't almost know you kind of lose the the blur between the real person and the 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 person doing the reenactment. But some of the ones the 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 stories they have are really good. And there's two per episode. Like the one I just watched was super creepy. Where and it, it almost sounds kind of like a movie that, you know, a couple of horror movies that we've seen. But it's this, this couple moves into a, a, a new house and I guess the husband's trying to clean out the attic. And he discovers that there's um like a wall built in front of another wall. So he hammers through it and finds a bunch of boxes of these boxes of videotapes. And so his wife wants just, oh, let's just throw this out. This is garbage. But for some reason, he feels like he has to watch it and he can't sleep at night. So he goes literally out to the garbage, gets these videotapes, brings them in the house and starts playing them. And they're all literally just blank videotapes with a date on it. So he he's watching it and it basically just shows um, basically the guy like kind of like being like a peeping Tom on some woman. And... Ugh. Yeah, and he, but the thing is, the guy gets like obsessed watching the videos, and he's to the point where he's flat out lying. Like his wife's, uh, like, "Where were you last night?" You know, in bed. He goes, oh, "I fell asleep on the couch," and you know, stuff like that. And it, and they basically, it's just most of the time, it's just him watching her in different spots. Then the last tape he sees, it's like the act guy goes in and actually murders the woman. And, but the whole time while that's happening. The wife is get the wife who doesn't even know this is going on is literally getting haunted. Like there's and like windows are cracking. And at one point, 
apparently she was literally dragged through the hallway by her feet and like and it was so it was, it was really creepy and uh, when they kept going to the you know the, the real people then they would ask the husband and the wife and the husband would kind of say yeah it was felt like i was possessed like i literally could not stop watching the videotapes and apparently he watched 50 hours of these tapes <laughs> and so it's like really okay. yeah and so and it shows after they have a little summary at the end and apparently they ended up getting divorced because he was never the same after watching it it's really you know so it sounds like the plot of sinister it does it seems yeah exactly like sinister yeah because remember that was like the thing he was watching the <laughs> movies but so i mean i don't know whether that's the thing it's like you know you take all these shows the way with a grain of salt there was actually one um right before it in the same episode which was kind of cool but again this reminds me of a little bit of that short uh segment in um vhs uh the, the second one where the, this girl gets into an accident, and they give her a retina transplant, and she starts seeing the 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 guys re, uh, the guy whose retina she took, like his crimes and everything. So, oh yeah. yeah, you know, I like I don't know where, you know, if these things are, you know, who knows how real they are, but it's still it's just done so well, so it's almost like you're getting to watch like a little mini horror anthology. So to me, that's fine. I don't care if it's true or not. In all honesty, <laughs> I just like watching. <laughs> I just like watching oh, yeah. it. <laughs> Well, some of those can be creepy, no matter what. You know, whether they're whether they're real or not, they're still if if they're done well, they're still pretty. Oh yeah, cool. and these are so these are quite. And you actually, I don't know if any uh, anyone that has, um, I guess the package, uh, the cable package, you can get. Um, it's on the app too. You can download them off uh, the TLC app. Both both oh, cool. these shows actually are available on there. So if you get a chance, check them out because they are. It, it like I said, it, it's interesting enough that it's like it's whether or not it's true, it's still fun to watch. Well, Olivia and I sat down and watched the premiere of Channel Zero No End House, which is the second season of Channel Zero. Now, did you catch the first season Mm -mm. of this show? I didn't even know what this was, actually. Yeah, well, the the first season was phenomenal. You really need to go watch that one. It's Sci-Fi did an original series, uh, Channel Zero, which is based on creepypasta stories. So, which, if you guys don't know what creepypasta is, it's basically internet spread horror stories little horror stories that people share on social media that kind is of that thing. what that was because i have to say i wasn't quite sure what that was but okay yeah that, yeah that's what they call creepypasta but and there's sites devoted to this that's where slender man came out of and all that kind of stuff so there's tons of really really good ones out there you know that people have come up with and the Channel Zero series was always set up sort of like american horror story where it takes a different creepypasta per season Hmm. so the first season was about a children's television show that people again this is all fictional but it's it's told as if it was real uh that just children's television show that people remembered seeing and it was causing people to you know children to to go crazy and kill each other and all kinds of stuff it was it's a great great show because some of the imagery in it is very 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 creepy and it, some of the some of the scariest like creepiest stuff i've ever seen on television. really and it, so it's, it's like a half hour hour anthology kind of thing or uh it's an it's an hour um per episode but the whole season is devoted to the one story oh okay okay so it's not a true anthology yeah. it's no each, it's, it's kind of like anthology. american horror story i guess you said right okay. yeah yeah each season is self-contained oh. but but it's devoted to a particular story so if you haven't seen the first season definitely go check that one out it was phenomenal i have to see if it's on like the app or something maybe i can download yeah it, it probably it probably is the second season is about uh and i didn't know what this was about going into it but it's a creepypasta called no end house and I've read the creepypasta since, and the, the TV series takes some liberties with it, but it's still a cool premise. And the idea is, at least in the TV series, is that there is, around haunt time, there's this house, haunted house, basically, that is set up. You don't know which city it's going to be in. They start promoting it through these viral, weird viral videos, you know, a couple of weeks before it appears. Mm. And... When it finally does appear, they'll drop clues as to where it's going to be. And then when it shows up, the house has six rooms. And the claim is that nobody's ever made it to the sixth room. Oh, wow. I've already, like, excited to see this yeah. one. Yeah. When I saw this, I was like, oh, my God, Brian's going to have a fit. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, the TV show's uh, main character is this girl named Margot. 
I don't know, Margo. Sorry. Yeah. I, every time I hear Margo, I have no to end. do that line from Christmas <laughs> Vacation. Sorry. The, uh, the, uh, <laughs> now nah, nah, I'm all co- co- flabbering Sorry. or whatever. <laughs> Anyway, whatever that's, that's a word. Uh, so Margot and her friends basically realize that No End House is coming to their town, and so they decide to go visit this thing. And it's like a, you know, there's cars lined up along the street, and here's the house at the end, and it's super creepy house. Oh my god! And it's basically a haunt with six rooms, and each room gets progressively crazier. And supposedly nobody's ever made it to the end because they use psychological warfare against you. They play on your darkest fears. It's different for everybody. Uh, so some, and the first episode was really, really cool. It's a little, little slow moving, but by the end, I was completely hooked. So I can't wait to see the rest of the season. I'm actually going to see if I can get, if I, you know, if I can download any of these right away, because then I'm going to, you know, with the flight tomorrow, I kind of want to see this right away now. <laughs> Yeah, I believe there's, I mean, you have time to catch up on it because, like I said, the second season's self-contained, so you can start watching that right away before the season one if you want to. And I believe there's only two episodes so far. Oh, okay, that's easy enough. I can get there. So, uh, yeah, so you can catch up. Um, But, yeah, definitely check those out. And the other thing I saw was Leatherface. Oh, right. So the the, uh, the, the long-awaited prequel. I just have to watch that this Uh, week. Um. So my <laughs> review, hmm, it's a, and I've seen this echoed in other places. It's a decent movie. I don't know if it's a good Texas Chainsaw movie. It's so funny. They can never get these right. Yeah, well, the, <laughs> the, the first thing one. Is, <laughs> here's the problem. Because the movie takes place, you know, when Leatherface was obviously a teenager. Right. And, you know, it starts off with um, basically the Sawyer family gets... Uh, you know, goes a step too far. They get taken over by the authorities. The kids, the Sawyer kids get put into an insane asylum, basically. And they end up breaking out and kidnapping a nurse with them. Um, now, th- th- I'm not giving you anything away you won't see in the synopsis. Yeah, no, in the so trailer, the actually, there's one trailer I saw that almost does that. It, it basically verbatim what you said, what they show. <laughs> right. Yeah, so that's not a spoiler. That's just the, the premise you'll see in the, in the yeah. movie. Um, but it has all the harm hallmarks of a chainsaw movie. It's got, you know, the weird, the crazy batshit, crazy people. It's got the, uh, the, the very brutal violence, all that kind of thing. But the problem is it, it doesn't really have Leatherface because, you know, this is a, this is a prequel. So that's the, pro- that's kind of the problem. So while I enjoyed it at some level, there were times when I felt like, you know, you could have made this, you know, wrong turn eight or uh, something. Really? You know, because I don't know that I really, really connected it to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre when all was said and done. It didn't feel like, you know, that prequel that just flowed right into the first movie and just felt like a, a, a part of the saga. It, it kind of felt to me like a movie where it, it really could have been any kind of clan of crazy people like house of a thousand corpses or something else where you just had this crazy family and this happened. And it, and if you didn't brand it Leatherface, I probably would have accepted it and been, Oh, that was a pretty cool movie. Uh, they should have done so, like the ro- Now yeah. I don't know what happens. Obviously I have not seen this yet. And you obviously don't, you know, we won't divulge it if it, if this, if I am right based on, uh, you know, for, for the people that haven't seen it, but I think they should have went the rogue one route where like, you don't see him until the very end, and he just goes in there and goes slices up a whole house full of people <laughs> in the chainsaw like Darth Vader did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it just ends with him standing there with the chainsaw, yeah. and then it zoom. But I don't know. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's hard when you do those prequels. It's uh... it's not bad though. That's why I don't want to give the impression that it's a bad movie because I really enjoyed it at some level. But uh, again, it's one of those things where it's. If you're looking for a true Texas Chainsaw prequel, blah, 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 you may be a little, come away a little disappointed. If you kind of just go in with no expectations, just looking for a, you know, a horror movie, you might enjoy it. Yeah. It's hard. I mean, yeah, you gotta, you can only do so much in a prequel anyway, with it, cause you gotta stay with mythology at some, some point, but. But speaking of horror icons, you're getting ready to go see a pretty cool sequel. Yeah, because, um, uh, Lucky enough, it just so happens that while I'm going to be out in the Bay Area, 
uh, the Victor Crowley uh, tour is coming around there, and it's going to be at the Roxy uh, Cinema, which I actually, I, I can't, you know, I want to say I've been to once, but I can't remember. But um, I, there's a lot of really cool old theaters out there, so I may have gotten confused with one of the other ones. But So, yeah, so I'm going with my uh, good friend Paul, who is obviously the mastermind we've mentioned before behind our first chop sound effect. And he's a big uh, influence to why I was uh, I continued such uh, my love of horror back in in college. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna definitely have him on the show at one point because he we we got plenty of stuff to talk about and he's uh, got a great uh, sense of uh, the horror industry too. So, but anyway, yeah. So we're gonna go. I'm gonna meet up with him. We're gonna all go see it uh, uh, Tuesday night. So I'll I'll give a you know in the next episode I'll give a spoiler free review of course. Uh, and I can't wait because I love that Hatchet series. I mentioned a million times that how much I, I mean, Adam Green in general just is just one of my favorite directors. So this I'm kind of excited about, especially because this movie you know kind of sprung upon us secretly as we mentioned in the the uh, previous episodes. So I will definitely, hopefully, I you know when I looked him, I don't see it coming around North Carolina at all actually. No, I've already looked. That's, There's no yeah, I don't know why this, so. but I have a feeling it'll be something that'll be out on uh, uh, home release soon enough. I mean, it's, right. it's going to just make its tour, and then it'll be out, and probably on demand or something. But uh, and speaking yep. of on demand, I I got to watch uh, Houses October Built Two, which kind of actually would have been better segued in if it's right behind your Channel Zero. I I realized I should have tucked that in there, but um, because obviously if you've seen the first one, you know that there's like that kind of like rogue haunted house uh, right. thing going yep. around the blue skeleton, and I mean. This, uh, without giving anything away, you know, this sequel is, is is done a little bit, it's still found footage-esque, but there are some scenes that aren't found footage, they kind of sprinkle it in more of a, dra- like a drama version of it, or whatever, I guess, you know, not drama, but you know what I mean, more theatrical of a, of a presentation, but, but it's still, you know, you still get this more of the same from like what you did the first movie, you love the first movie, you'll love the second movie. And I so it's like I I still love this one. This was so much fun to do to watch because you know they go through the haunts, they go through all these events and everything. So it's cool. And one of the haunts actually, I don't know if you guys watch the Travel Channel shows where they go around the different haunts. You'll recognize uh, one of the ones they go through with the haunted hayride where there's that where there's explosions, and it's a really high tech. Uh, hayride out in the middle of nowhere i know i've seen that one on travel channel and it's cool that they actually have the movie going through it too and yeah and there's even a weird uh kind of a cameo by kobayashi as they ended up going hmm. to a zombie brains eating contest in there. Oh, and nice. so he, he's in there eating and he, he plays himself and it's kind of funny so yeah but uh, yeah if you like the first one which i know tim and i did you'll love the second one it's just, just it's more the same and kind of you know but they take it up a, a notch and it's really good Wait, no, please, God, no, don't call up on it. So let's run through the disc membermit for October 10th. These are the Blu-ray releases that are coming out this Tuesday. First up, we have Open Water 3 Cage Dive. Ah, uh, it's right on three. the coattails of, of uh, 47 meters down. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know there was an open water 2, much less an open water 3, but here we go. Yeah, they were, open water 2 is, is, it was, is a little differently... Than the other, I think it was like, I mean, it was it was people in the water again, but I think it was like more like a suspense where they were getting, uh, I think their boat got taken over by people or something. Oh, okay. After the first, I mean, the first one was great, I thought. Yeah, the first one. And, was but really then, good, the, but... yeah, then the, the now they're just coming out with them using the open water moniker now for anyone that wants to be in the water. I mean, it's kind of. Yeah. But we'll we'll see. We'll, we'll let Tim write his uh, read his uh, his description here. <laughs> yeah, so not my description. Whoever <laughs> the yuckleheads that write these things. That's true. It's not be, so Tim. Okay. Only when they're really good, we know Tim has has uh, touched right. on it. But you know, uh, but it's been more fun lately to just copy and paste. I them think. Uh, yeah, so. I agree. <laughs> this one's well written though. Okay, so three friends filming an audition tape for an extreme reality show. <laughs> Take part in shark cage diving, only to be left in great white infested waters, turning their recording into life and death. I mean, you know what? It's probably going to be a fun movie. Probably not not like not acted very well, and probably not even great effects. But I bet you it. I bet you it's enjoyable. Yeah, like I would watch it. I I don't know if I'm going to go out and buy it, but I would definitely yeah. see myself if it's on, yeah. stopping and watching it. Yeah. 
Oh, I like a, sh- a good shark movie. Yeah, so. that's the thing. I mean, anything with sharks has always got that merit to, to it, you know. So Now, this is one I haven't seen, but I've always been intrigued by. This is the Poughkeepsie Tapes from 2007. Am I saying that right? Poughkeepsie? I mean, I mean, I actually know where the town is. It's in, you know, uh, I, I, they say Poughkeepsie, but I mean, Poughkeepsie. it's spelled okay. Poughkeepsie. So I don't know why, uh, you know, it's one of those oh, things well, where... Poughkeepsie. Yeah, I thought you might know because I knew it was up that way, so... Uh, in an abandoned house in Poughkeepsie, New York, murder investigators uncover hundreds of tapes showing decades of a serial killer's work. See, that's funny. That almost is like that episode of Evil mm-hmm. Things I just watched. That's kind of so that's funny. What they, that's where they got it from, too. Yeah. Huh. Um, that one That one sounds pretty cool. This one is uh, interesting. <laughs> the Lure 2015. In Warsaw, a pair of mermaid sisters are adopted into a cabaret. <laughs> Don't hear that yeah. every day. <laughs> While one seeks love with humans, the other hungers to dine on the human population of the city. <laughs> so I guess they're, yeah, they're, they're, I guess they're like those typical sisters that are like different, you know, like the. Yeah. I bet you Patty Duke would have played them both if it was. Uh, yeah. It was Sally's more... always wanting to eat people. <laughs> I just want to date people. Actually, you know what? If they went that route and made it really over the top comedic, I bet this might be the film of the year. <laughs> yeah. But something tells me they're I just not like how they like casually say. Uh, a pair of mermaid sisters. Yeah, I know they make it sound like yeah. you know. There's, oh well, you know. There's usually you only see one mermaid. <laughs> but here's a pair for you. Here's just a pair. Yeah. yeah, but I'll give you three for a dollar. I, <laughs> I would want to see though if like how much actually takes place underwater. You know, if they or if they do like yeah. the, the cheap effects where they just they're kind of like you know surfacing and they're like you know you see the pop them up you know popping them up or do you actually see the full mermaid kind of thing you know. <laughs> I don't know. Just uh, mermaid things, I things always freak me out. Like for some reason, I've always been like kind of scared of mermaids. Even Ariel, so. the Little Mermaid. No, not the Little Mermaid, okay. but like like the creepy mermaid when they try to do creepy mermaids. Stuff. Oh, like those the like underwater they, siren mermaids, like those. Yeah, or like when they try to make you think that mermaids are real. Oh yeah, yeah. Things like the that stupid documentary on that they had, where it's supposed to be like mermaids are real. But that, that always kind of creeped me out, though. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, the what was the point? Was it was it Harry Potter the ones where they had the ones underwater, those like creepy ones? That, yeah, yeah, those were scary. Yeah, yeah like that's the kind that. that so Tim does but not that, like jump scares and that. <laughs> yeah, I kind of want to see this one because like evil mermaids is is like one of my my sensitive buttons that you. you know, some people have clowns. Mine's evil mermaids. And I bet you that's a lot harder one to to. To come well, face to hey, face it makes sense. No, it makes sense. Like, think about Creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh, right. Yeah, there you go. It's essentially kind of a merman type-ish thing. I'm freaked out by things underwater that shouldn't be there. Yeah, but the thing is, and you like sharks, too, even though they should be there, but still. So, yeah. Tim's just an aquatic guy. There you go. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the water. And I've never been a big fan of the water, so maybe that's where that comes from. But anyway. Um, then this one we touched on when it was out, actually out in the theater. Oh, right. Wish, yeah, Wish Upon. A teenage girl discovers a box that carries magic powers and a deadly price for using them. I still want to see this one, kind of. Though. Yeah, no, I, I, you know, it's one of those ones I was interested in when when we first mentioned it. Yeah, I think I was a little harsh on it when I talked about it for the theatrical thing, but even though I hadn't seen it, I kind of want to give it a shot. Well, well, everyone, sit down for this next one. <laughs> oh yeah, we got a novel coming. Yeah, this out. one's we a doozy. Mr. Uh, Ernest Hemingway wrote this one. Apparently, so. yeah. <laughs> okay, it's called The Barn from 2016. You know, this is one of those that you could tell, like, the people that did the movie wrote the IMDb Yeah, Because you, yeah, you there was, like, there was, like, two of them, and so I just picked the longest one. <laughs> anyway. Aren't you guys lucky? <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, audience. Yeah. It's Halloween 1989. So, right away, we've got a, a movie set in the yeah. 80s. <laughs> It's Halloween 1989, and best friends Sam and Josh are trying to enjoy their last, quote, devil's night, unquote, before graduating high school. Trouble soon arises when the two pals and a group of friends take a detour on their way to a rock concert, finding an old abandoned barn and awakening the evil inside. Now, get ready. This is the Justice League of Horror people right here. The Boogeyman... Hallowed Jack and the <laughs> I can't read it. What is this? <laughs> I can't read it. Okay, hey, I'll say that again. The Boogeyman, <laughs> Hallowed Jack, and the Candy Corn Scarecrow. What is that? Why? 
Is he made of candy corn, or does he just walk around uh, with a bag of candy corn? I cannot say that with a straight face. The candy corn scarecrow. <laughs> And it was so funny because it was like, you know, you were, you were kind of getting like, okay, the boogeyman, ooh, you know, boogie, then, ooh, Hello, Hello Jack, Jack that's Jack, like cool. Yeah. And then, then you got like a man that's like, like candy. all I could think of was, all I could think of was Candyland, like it was a character from Candyland. You're like, maybe he only comes if you pick like the card that has his face on it. <laughs> 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 well, well, yeah, well, I, this one I gotta say, the candy corn scarecrow. I got, I have got to see what that looks. Yeah, like. Yeah, that that one is good. Well, I'll tell you, they, they they knew where they knew where to hit us to get us in there. It was, even if it was the very towards the end of the summary, they found it. Ugh. Oh my gosh, that is ridiculous. Now it's up to Sam and Josh to find a way to protect his <laughs> friends and defeat the creatures that lurk within the barn. Hey, I've got an idea. Just leave the barn. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Get away from the barn. <laughs> I know, because it notice it says that lurk within the barn. No, it, it, they're, and, they're in the and barn. in the title, the barn. So it, it seems like that's where your problem is. So pretty much, yeah. I mean, and as far as I know, you know, I mean, I know you you know, get a bag of candy corn, you pretty much drop it. it. Usually stays where it is. So I think you could probably escape at least the candy corn scarecrow. But now we, I don't know about this boogeyman and Hallow Jack. I don't know where, where, what their speed. Oh my is, god, but... the candy corn scarecrow. That's. Yeah, well, the people that star in this two are kind of funny. Did you notice the names? It's, it's Mitchell Mussolino, Will Stout, Lexi Drips, Cortland Woodard, Nikki Darling, and Nicholas Joshua. It's a lot of a lot of names. Uh, uh, I feel like we're being incredibly harsh to this movie, but no, but we, but we said we're gonna watch it, so we're gonna watch it. We're gonna watch it. Yeah, I mean, you, hey, it has its it has its chance to redeem itself, but. Yeah, I went. No, I, I can't. I, yeah, no. Once, once you read Candy Corn Scarecrow, I'm like, all right, this. Now I got to see this. You know, I was still laughing about that. Okay, <laughs> the board. Oh, uh, <laughs> next up, Kill Baby Kill, 1966. Oh, this is. It's, I, I want to say, is this on? Uh, was this on Shutter recently? I don't know. This. It might have been. It sounds familiar. Yeah. It's about a 19th century European village haunted by the ghost. Of a murderous little girl. Oh, creepy kids. Those are always the worst little girls. Yeah, creepy kid alert. Ones creepy that... kid alert. <laughs> yeah. Um, next up is the Green Slime from 1968. A giant asteroid is heading toward Earth, so some astronauts disembark from a nearby space station to blow it up. The mission is successful, and they return to the station, unknowingly bringing back a gooey green substance that mutates into one-eyed tentacle monsters that feed off electricity. Soon the station is crawling with them, and people are being zapped left and right! <laughs> Exclamation point. I love that's where it ends, <laughs> the summary. <laughs> wow. It's like they were surprised why they were writing it. Oh my god, this is really happening. I know, they're like, oh, wait, it's to the left of us. It's to the right of us. People are being zapped. Yeah, well, I, I will tell you this. For 1968, like, that kind of movie, though, sounds like one of those really cool, like, oh, like yeah. fun, oh, like... Awesome cheesy sci-fi movies that 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 are usually really really fun to watch so oh speak of that like that boris karloff comic i got today which is like boris karloff presents blah 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 <laughs> house of blah and this is one of the reasons i bought it it has something like it's called like the terror of the frog man and it's like they you know they dared mess with the frog man and there's like this like hunched over dwarf thing, and then there's like an actual giant frog like leaping at them. Oh wow! So that's what this reminded me of the green slime. I was like, that's just awesome. Like stuff back then, they just like hey, throw a giant frog in there. Well, you know what happens too when a frog's car breaks down, right? They get towed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, you knew that was coming. You guys. knew it was you coming. Knew that was coming. That was brewing. You knew it was coming. We hadn't had a good pun yet. Yeah, so. that was it. <laughs> And then the last one is uh, our old friend Blood Feast. Oh. It just won't die. It won't. It just keeps coming it back. It won't die. 1963 Blood Feast. So I I did not pick a pick of the week, but I'm going to go with... I got to go with the barn because of that candy corn Yeah, scarecrow. I was going to say, I, yeah, I really, when I first looked at this review, I'm like, there's really nothing here that I could, could stand behind as pick of the week, but... But, you know, as we, you know, reading about the barn and, and realizing we, we all now need to find out what this candy corn scarecrow is all about. <laughs> and fair warning, we are recommending you buy this only because of the name candy corn yeah, scarecrow. Yeah, so don't, 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 don't kill us on this, this movie. No. 
Now, I think it'd be funny if it was like the Scarecrow and the Wizard of Oz and it was like singing around like, you know, like if I only had a corn, you know, like maybe maybe it's like a, a fun oh, Scarecrow. You never know. Oh, my head is made of candy <laughs> corn. <laughs> oh, God. Apologies to the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> and, and Ray. No, wait. Ray Bolger. Right. Yeah. Ray Bolger. <laughs> Apologize. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. But wait, yeah, we're going to find out about this candy corn Scarecrow. Believe me. <laughs> We're going to get to the bottom of this, damn it. Yeah, it's the last thing we do. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Oh, and then theatrical releases for October 6th. No horror, but I put in the rundown, holy shit, Blade Runner 2049, what? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I like Blade Runner. I'm very excited about this movie. The Adam Savage podcast, which is still untitled by Adam Savage, which he, he was uh, the guy from Mythbusters. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. He has a great little podcast, but he actually had a bit part in a short that was a promo for this movie. So he got to see an early cut of it. So his last episode, he did a spoiler cat. Not, I'm sorry, a non-spoiler review of it, and he said it was incredible. So I'm really, really looking forward to this one. Oh, nice. Even. Though it's, even you know, it's not horror. It's Blade Runner. That's a that's a huge sequel. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Guys. So let's get into our October preview. Let's see what do, what do Tim and Brian have planned for this month besides the aforementioned uh, Williamsburg trip, of course. Yeah. Um, well, which we're, we'll we'll cover actually in detail next, but. We also got some other things that we we're going to try to get out to this month. So let's go for that. Yeah. So um. So the Bush Gardens uh, Howl of Scream as as is like the moniker for that. You know, along it's you know it's 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 pretty much a typical you know the way they do the the regular haunted theme parks. But as I said mentioned earlier, it's like done up to to some really cool levels that I, that you don't always see. I mean, I would say. I mean, I know I haven't been to any of the uh, you know the Universal Horror Nights, which Tim and I plan to remedy next year. Um, I, I would, I mean, from what I see images of that and what people tell me, I would say this is a little step down from that, which is not a, a bad thing at all because, you know, it's definitely better than the one, the Six Flags ones I've been to and the, the Cedar Fair ones I've been to. Um, you know, as far as the house, I'll get to later, the haunted house one, uh, itself, probably I still, I still give that nod to, um, Lake Compounds, but, um, you know, this one's split into a bunch of different houses here and, um. They have well. First of all, they have little scare areas, and one's called Ripper Row, which is located in the England uh, portion, which is kind of right when right. you enter they the have, park. Cedar Fair has that one. As oh, well. do they? Sort of similar, something similar. Yeah, Carowinds had a has a kind of a London England. Oh, right, they do. One. They do. Well, the thing is funny with Bush Gardens is it fits because it, it's like really in the England themed area, so they really right, don't have yeah. to do as much, I guess. But uh, and then they have uh, Demon Street in the France area. We have Axe Alley, which is in the New France area, and Vampire Point in Oktoberfest. Oh, and sorry, one more Sideshow Square, which is in the Festa Italia, which is kind of like the uh, kind of the fun circusy area. That's where Tempesto is. Uh, <laughs> and um, so they had their houses. They they have there's one called Unearthed, Scarlet Revenge, Catacombs, okay, Cornered, Lumberhack, Frostbite. <laughs> Cisco Sinistro and Deadline and Frostbite was the only one that I went through um, it's actually it's located inside the uh, Curse of Dark Castle ride so you're literally walking on the track for the ride which is kind of cool oh that's interesting yeah it's yeah. really and it's really and it uses the effects of uh, some of the effects of the ride which is a lot of screen based things so that's all I'll say because obviously Tim did not get to experience it yet that was the only one I did I wanted to save the rest for when we're, we go with our group it's just that one they kind of gave us a free tour through the media day thing so we kind of just you know kind of went in and but i i I tried not to enjoy it as much (laughs) even (laughs) though it was hard because it was really well done um and they also as i mentioned too they have two no escape rooms which we is like tim said probably more like a i would say like those skeleton key rooms which are those bonus rooms you can pay for at the cedar fair parks where you kind of get like a five to ten minute experience private experience so to speak and those are really fun as we say we'll have to tell that story but we got to get kevin on before we tell that story uh, right yeah sure. he does the best uh poo man impression yeah he does uh yeah and th- that was that was fun and that was just the uh it was uh me tim our, our wives and kevin we were in there and there's just yeah this character went went to town with us but um so yeah so that those are the and the, the two escape rooms are the case of mr carver which is kind of like a um, 
I don't know, the rumor that there's some weird, like, kind of, like, mad scientist in there that was, like, screaming at everybody when we were standing in there to tour it. And then Case of the Haunted Hotel, which, I mean, is pretty obvious. <laughs> there's a bellhop in there and a, and a hotel lobby. And I guess that's the thing. So I don't, like I said, I don't know much about these on what the, the challenges are or how much they are like an, a traditional escape room. I, but I think Tim probably nailed it on the head. I think it's more like a, like one of those skeleton key rooms. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. So, oh, and then I'll do, I'll do the next one. I'm going to do, this is a local one near, uh, in Long Island. Uh, it's called Bayville Screen Park. And the Bayville's like a little beach town. Um, and they have this, uh, uh, it's usually during the regular year, it's called the Bayville Adventure Park. It's like miniature golf and bumper boats and one well, of those little tiny little like, you know, like, you know, kind of go-karts, that kind of a place. But around uh, Halloween time, they do, they call it the Bayville Scream Park. And they, the entire park is themed to Halloween and a ton of different haunts there, which I still have not been to. Shame on me. I swear, the thing has been around like 10 years already and I have not been there once. But uh, I already... Uh, touch base with Seth and uh, we're going to go down there. He's been there. So he said it's really cool. Um, so the, the things they have there are the cage, temple terror, Funhouse of fear, 3d, which is, that's kind of like the run of the mill. They key. A lot of places do that. Yeah. The 3d Everybody's clown. Got a killer clown. Yeah. And they always do it 3d because the makeup can come out at you and yeah, it's all right. But you know, the gimmick is kind of getting old, but uh, zombie pirates, Bloodworth, haunted mansion, evil woods, and then they just have something new, which I can't tell if it's a room or an experience, but it's called Scream Machine. So I don't know what that is yet. Hmm. But I, I plan, I definitely plan to try and hit these and we'll, we'll do record and maybe get some interviews even for uh, for you loyal Civil Gore listeners. Well, I have got just one local haunt because we don't have a, uh, obviously our, our town's not as big as you know, some of the surrounding towns around New York and everything. So we have a, a more limited selection. But we do have a new one this year called Phobia Haunted Trail. I think it's new. Um, it may have been around yet last year. I just didn't go. But uh, this one is extremely clown themed <laughs> this year. Um, in fact, the theme is Carnival in the Woods. Oh. C-A-R-N, evil. In oh, the woods. I see what they did there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, but apparently this one is actually out in the woods, which is which is pretty yeah, cool. I, was, I like when they do haunts that are actually outside. Yeah, to me, the, those are some of the best best kind of haunts when you're outside, you know, because, you know, when you're inside, you're kind of like, okay, you kind of can almost predict when something's going to jump out at you based on the right. surroundings. But, yeah, when it comes – when it's outside, you don't know where they're coming from. Right. So um, – this one, the uh, the theme is apparently the circus was shut down and all the clowns are disgruntled employees. So <laughs> never want to <laughs> we'll, have an we'll angry see clown. How that goes. No, so I'm gonna probably try to check that one out next weekend uh, since it's local and it's uh, you know only about ten minutes from my house. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see how that one goes. You gotta take Kevin with you, so in case he'll uh... yeah, I'll definitely take Kevin because he's funny. His reactions to those things are, are quite humorous. I because I, that <laughs> one we went to Scarowins that time when you guys were all ahead of us and we kind of I don't know we got like a late start or something. We were like a good like five or six feet behind, and Kevin's reaction to like the guy coming out with the the me I can't even do it justice. So I'm not even gonna try. Just the, you, I mean, you know how expression the expressions on his face and. It just, <laughs> he just turned and looked at me and made it like this. What the f? Like the look on it was hilarious. Yeah, he's he's definitely. I tell you, you you have not gone through a haunt yet until you've gone through with the Wilson brothers. I will say that. That's right. There's nothing quite That's like right. it. between my screaming like a little girl and <laughs> Kevin's faces. And it's great when Olivia's in there and she just laughs hysterically. Yeah. And Julie's just like booking through. Like she, nothing scares her. They don't scare. I'm, no, I'm she, telling you. No, she doesn't scare. It's at all. so funny. She like literally. She walked through all anything of Hollow Scream. Things were jumping at her left and right. She didn't even move. In fact, there was one time when someone jumped out at her, almost knocked her over because I think they expected her to jump back, and she just stood her ground. <laughs> it was kind of funny. She doesn't even flinch. She doesn't. I don't understand. I guess living with me is scary enough. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's just it's. Uh, I got, I got, I got this at home. So what do I need this creepy thing? You know, but um, yeah. So, so the next one I'll do. This one apparently has been there, and I, I, this is the first I realized it's there. But there's a big uh, thing in New York City called Blood Manor. It's one of the like one of the true legendary haunts in the city, and apparently they have a Long Island version that they do in the Nassau Coliseum, 
which is Blood Manor, Crypts of the Coliseum. And I've only seen like some clips and videos of it and stuff. So I really don't know. It looks like there's a little medieval slant to it. Um, I don't know the, the storyline to it. So I'm actually kind of looking forward to going to this. And right now where I currently live, it's literally down the street. I could like walk to it if I wanted to. But I mean, uh, you know, it's probably drive anyway but yeah so this is this is nearby and i mean those of you who know hockey at all the islanders used to play there so there's nothing more scary than that ah 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 sorry had to do it <laughs> had to do it uh but anyway yeah so um so this will be good and it actually says it's supposedly filled with intense scenes and so it's 14 or over so yeah i don't know okay. what they you know what they classify as intense scenes well probably they have a candy corn store. yeah i think <laughs> right <laughs> it must be it must make an appearance somewhere so uh, one more on one more on Long Island that uh, this is new as far as I know this year. It's called NYZ Apocalypse, and as they they describe it as three experimental haunted attractions. Ooh, I like the sound of right, that. Right, yeah. And so I, what I saw of it, it looks like one of them is one is called City of the Dead, and it looks like it's like a laser tag featuring zombies. So I hmm. think you know. So I because I saw someone like armed with like one of those laser tag guns. So it looks like that's what you do. You probably fight your way through a city with with laser tag, which is kind of cool. Because I like when haunts add an element to it. You know, and you're just walking through like you always do. I kind of like when they add something like this. Yeah, I've always wanted to do one of those paintball zombie ones. Yeah, see, Have that's what I thought yeah. it was, but it like, definitely it has a laser tag because it's indoors. So, but yeah, that would be cool. I do want to do one of those. One of those in the zombie runs, actually, I want to do. But, uh, and then this one is too funny. This one's right up Tim's alley, I think. Clown <laughs> beatdown. <laughs> and they, they make, they go on to tell you, they say, <clears throat> full contact is optional. So you can actually tell them you want it. They, so I guess they, I don't know if they just grab you or they just, you know, you know, as opposed to just like, you know, getting close to you and like they do at usual haunts, maybe they just come up and grab you and that's when you, you lose, so to speak. But um, so basically you're taking out a gang of killer clowns. <laughs> I don't know. What, oh, I, mean, I don't know what you hit them with, but. I would totally be down for full contact, any kind of haunt. Yeah. Like if you could sign a thing and say, yes, you can just grab me. Or like pick me up or whatever. I would totally be down. For yeah, that. I mean, what you know what I mean? It's if you know it's like you know it's they're not gonna kill yeah, you. You know it's coming. I mean, it's like it, it and it just only adds to the kind of excitement of it. So that would be. I mean, yeah, I'd be all for that. Like, if it, I I told Seth already too. I'm gonna drag him to this again. Uh, we're gonna when we go to this. Thing, I, <clears throat> I'm gonna tell them. I said no. I gotta. Get, I mean, especially because I gotta tell this our faithful Civil Gore listeners. They need to. I need to go through some some suffering to get this this report right that's right so that's right yeah so the next one is is another one of these full contact is optional ones too and it's called escape the dark the ritual and it's navigate an underground prison taken over by a sadistic cult in total darkness so this one may be a little rough i got a a, total darkness with full contact would be a little scary because i don't know where they're full contacting but um <laughs> I, yeah and I, it depends on what they're contacting yeah so i gotta do because i know there's that one in new york where it's done by all those like those experimental actors where they you make you sign the waiver and literally like i read stories of that and the people are literally where they tie you up and slam you against a wall and like i don't know if i'm ever ready for that kind of stuff well, like yeah well, i've heard ones where they like lick your face and stuff i'm like i don't know about yeah that. see that that's that's full contact i don't need you know i don't, I don't want, or those ones where you have yeah. to go through like naked or something I, yeah i don't i don't think i'm, I'm don't, don't i don't think i need to go though to that level of haunt i think that the, the, these are like probably the extreme. so you're not up for nude haunt yeah i don't think i'm up for a nude haunt i don't know <laughs> i think i'll i think i'll just i'll keep my clothes on and and go through these <laughs> but uh See, now I wonder if, if like, this one – I don't know if you guys watch – sh- if anyone out there watches the show on Practical Jokers, but they just did uh, an episode where the punishment was Sal and he had to go through a zombie one where they gave him these foam bats and he had to hit them and back them off. So I'm wondering if that clown one is like that where you just kind of hit him with, like, a you know, a squishy bat kind of a thing, which got to be fun, yeah, you know. You just kind of bop fun. him on the head, yeah. I'll definitely report back. See, that th- these are why I kind of wanted to, like – we kind of wanted to go over this stuff because we want to kind of let you guys know, you know, that hopefully we'll be getting some good uh, content from based on these. So, yeah, the next one I have up is the one I'm going to see uh, when I go to my dad's party, which I'm going to talk about talk about in a little bit. And that is the one we went to last year called the Hickory Grove Haunted Trail. And they build themselves as one of the oldest haunts in North Carolina. I don't know the accuracy of that, but <laughs> they are uh 
really, really good. So this is another outside haunt. It goes through the woods. And the neat thing I really liked about this one is basically they give everybody a rope. And so, I mean, there's one piece of rope and there's like maybe five or six people that are holding onto this rope. So you can't let go of the rope. And then they have a person in front and a person in the back, which are basically guiding you through the trail. Oh, I always wanted to do one of those with that. I've yeah. heard of those with the rope. Yeah. So really, really fun. So uh, they, it keeps people from wandering off, but it also you know keeps you in a compact enough group that they can really scare you. And so you have people jumping out of the woods, obviously, but they also have indoor sections. They actually had buildings built out into the woods. So you might be walking along, go up the hill, and you see a sign for like this insane asylum. Oh, cool. And then you go up, and then you actually go inside this building, which is actually an insane asylum haunt. Mini, mini, I would say like a mini haunt that you have to walk through. And then there was even one section where they finally say, okay, you can let go of the rope. And then you have to go through and navigate by yourself, which was really scary because you no longer have that comfort of that rope you know and somebody in front of you and behind you so a really really well done haunt it was very long uh well worth the money and we're gonna go back and see it again this year when we go up to my dad's because it's literally right up the street from his house oh nice so, that's funny this yeah. is you put a put that right in the right spot because yeah what you described is very similar to the haunted graveyard at lake compounds which is the next one i was going to mention because basically that park is a very small park and this haunted graveyard is out in the back. So it's nowhere – it's like I, – I, I guess the area they use it in is pretty much reserved for this every year. And it's mm-hmm. very similar to that where you kind of start off. You go into this big area. You go into a, uh, like a big building. But the thing is then there's – you go out and back in. You, so you're constantly kind of like – it's basically I think six or seven haunt – it's connected so it's like a big it's like about a 45 minute to an hour experience and you it's connected by these outdoor sequences too so it's kind of like the same thing where you're like in something you're outside wandering a path and then you're back in a house and and i remember there was one sequence last year i i think they change a little bit up every year and, and actually our good friend uh adam beard was as we're recording this was just experienced it actually he was saying how great it was um there was one part was total darkness and you literally have to feel the walls to go oh yeah that sounds yeah cool. and so and it was re- and it's really really well done and they, i think there's have something over 600 actors inside through wow. this thing yeah and it encompasses encomp- encompasses the whole uh back lot i guess of the uh, lake compounds and it, i tell you and it, i think it's it's been shown on the travel channel a bunch of times um you can actually see a lot of videos of them of little behind the scenes stuff and they have a, actually this separate haunted graveyard website that shows you some clips and goes into some stuff and yeah so if you guys are in the connecticut area or even like drivable distance I, that it would be like i know if we, we don't really do a pick of the week for haunts or anything but that would be if the one uh you know in the tri-state area the one pick i would have to make is try and get to that haunt it's fantastic and the park just does it up they have some some of the roller coasters running at night total darkness too which is great so yeah it's that's that's definitely a a fantastic event i can't wait to go again so yeah one of my goals is to get up there to that for sure yeah Um, and it was the weekend of chiller you could have went but if we could have done that so we'll we'll do that one of these times don't worry yeah and the last thing i had on here was of course the uh the same weekend we're going up for the Bush Gardens meetup is also my dad's birthday. So he, for the last, and gosh, I can literally cannot remember how many years he's been doing this, but it's been over 10 years. It's well over 10 years. Um, he does his annual Halloween party at his uh, house, which he calls Fort Wilson. He's got a big piece <laughs> of property down there. And he always has a big combo birthday Halloween blowout party. And we, costumes are always mandatory <laughs> and uh he usually has a dj or a band or something playing but um always a ton of fun so we'll, we'll be unfortunately we can't hit king's dominion and uh and the other stuff we had planned for that saturday when we were on the meetup but instead we're gonna be driving to charlotte and going to that and but it's always it's always just a really really good time Yeah, you can't miss that um, you can't miss yeah my that. dad is my dad is a halloween nut he loves um props he loves theming he so he has his entire barn decorated for halloween he's got actually 
he used to have horses, so each horse stall is decorated with a Halloween scene. Oh my god, I got to get up inside. there for that, to, or down there. Yeah, you got to come down. Da- <laughs> yeah, you you got to come down for that at least one time. Everybody needs to experience one of Dad's parties. Um, they get they get pretty crazy. In fact, one year he even had a haunted trail out in the woods. He's still got some props and stuff out there. He um, he has an old hearse that he bought. Oh wow, um, actual hearse that uh, he themed up and it's got you know all the cool little skeleton window knobs and all kinds of cool stuff on it. So, um, yeah, he's a, yeah, I definitely tell where I got my love for horror from was, was dad. So, uh, we'll be hitting that. And like I said, going to the Hickory Grove trail haunt while we're up there for that. So that should be a really, really fun weekend and, uh, looking forward to it. We might have to do a, like a, a live civil gore recording from your dad's party one year. Oh yeah, absolutely. That would, that yeah, would be, that would epic. be, that'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have him I've on. Had, um, <laughs> and my dad's like, my dad is completely like, the more friends you can bring, the better. It's like he is all about bringing people. So, um, yeah, anytime you want to come, for sure. Oh yeah, well, I know that. Seth's been dying to go. He he wanted to come this year. Remember, he's like, I'll come up this year, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, Seth's like, well, come on, let's go, and I'm like, yeah, well, it's. <laughs> you know that's it's it's you know it's in charlotte right <laughs> it's like, i think seth forgot where the it's a long where time. that is but yeah but no well yeah we'll we'll blah maybe who knows maybe next year we'll be able to, to plan that and we'll do a live uh show from uh fort wilson yeah it's a it's a yearly event and as long as my dad can physically do it i'm sure he will be doing it so uh you'll have plenty more years to to give that a shot does, does so. he have a uh a prop of the candy cane scarecrow no but he does have a life-size freddy, freddy krueger oh nice yes is he doing stand-up so. comedy or is he just there? <laughs> no he's just okay <laughs> um now last episode we promised about our october horror movie challenge which is uh actually already underway we've already posted it to our facebook if you haven't seen already but we decided we'd kind of go through some of these fun ones, just to give you an idea, if you have not seen it yet, go out to Facebook, look at the list. This is just a fun challenge. It's not for a prize or anything. It's just just kind of for fun. And we basically came up with 31 achievements, if you will, yeah. if you're familiar with Xbox achievements. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you get to pick the film. That's what's unique. You don't you don't have to watch what we want you to watch. You have just have to watch a film that meets the criteria. And we have one for every day in October. You don't have to do them in order. Uh, we just came up with 31 just so you'd have one per day if you really wanted to be aggressive. Right. About or, this. I mean, if you, you know, hey, if you got a slow weekend, you want to do all 31, you know, <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> go right ahead. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah. Um, but we uh, we themed each of these after we kind of tried to put some inside jokes for our longtime listeners in and um so brian if you want to go through some of these just to give you an example of of what we're talking about yeah well like if you notice obviously this number two uh we have completely blasphemous which <laughs> which we thought would be unique you have to watch a horror film featuring an actor or actress who is also appeared in poor blart 2 <laughs> so <laughs> as you know that's uh, for long time listeners that's been a, a running joke since the beginning of this yeah. podcast, I think. And, uh, yeah, so we thought we, we, that's what we kind of wanted to go for. We wanted to make it very podcast-centric because there's so many of these out there. We wanted to be a little different, a little fun, you know, kind of match the theme of our podcast. Yeah, one of my favorites is number 14 called Great Podcasting. Yeah. <laughs> and you have to watch a horror film with a character named Tim or Brian. Yeah, so that shouldn't be that hard. I would think there's got to be. There's got to be. Yeah. But I mean, I I mean I say I don't know. How do you feel about this? I don't know. This might be a stretch because technically the character is not Tim in it, but you know, Blood Harvest does have um, Tiny Tim starring as Mervo uh, the Clown. Does that I, count? I, I judge ruling. I would I would give it. To okay, you. I'd give it. So to there, you. there, there's a hint. We'll give you a hint on that one. Even though I would try for something more challenging for sure. You know, we might change that. I might I might say a horror film with a person or character there you go so it could be an actor there you go good idea of course this will be changed well, before you hear this so <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> little so we we just retroactive we, we just retconned our own horror movie yeah we, we, we <laughs> back in time what was like the bill um, and ted right they always just go back they like just say yeah. oh remind me to remember this boom here's a pencil you know <laughs> 
Uh, let's see some other fun ones on here. Um, watch a horror film released before 1950. That one's called Stars of the Silver Scream. Yeah, I, like, <laughs> I like that one. Or this, this is actually one of my favorites that Tim named. We were, Your Career is Dead. <laughs> with a <laughs> horror film featuring an actor that has won an Oscar. <laughs> I already know one that we've actually mentioned on this show. That's e- it's, it's, it's in part of one of our uh, summer slaycation ones. That's pretty easy to... to... To figure out as far as far as puns go, this was my favorite. A film featuring a horror movie icon such as Robert England, Kane Hodder, or something in a non iconic role. And the challenge name is Anything You Can Do, Icon Do Better. <laughs> <laughs> I know that was a good one. Yeah, th- this this really was not meant for you guys, actually. This is more for me and Tim to We're just, just have 31 pun chances. I mean, yeah. that's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. No, but yeah, no. Some of these are—I mean, some of them are pretty uh, straightforward. Obviously, we have a horror f- film based on a novel, which was the book was better than the movie, which is kind of funny, you know, stuff like that. So there's a lot of uh, basic ones here, but we obviously wanted to pepper in a lot of the more personal ones that would be more fun for the, the podcast listeners. And 24 though has got to be the most podcast centric one, don't you think? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Which of course for is sure. dulcet tones. <laughs> <laughs> that's a horror film prominently featuring music right. such as a musical or a rock band now what i plan to do with this and again you are free to do with whatever this list whatever you want what i plan to do is i'm trying to watch 31 movies i have never seen before because i think that's more fun right to, you know i always have my standards i watch every halloween but i thought it might be fun to just try to get in 31 movies i've never seen before and um and try to you know make them fit this criteria. And what I'm going to attempt to do, and I encourage all of our listeners to do as well, is as you cross a movie off the list, just um, tweet us with you know uh, the the number of the achievement you unlocked and which movie you saw, and maybe like a quick blurb of you know, whether you liked it or not. And so, for example, you know if I watch one for a film before 1950, I might just say you know number 16 civil gore horror movie challenge i think we had hashtag cg hmc or yeah like yeah that. it's on the it's on, it'll be on you'll see it on the list yeah. of course just just hashtag it so we can find it and uh and just tell us a little bit about the movie so just to generate discussion and generate you know so you get ideas from what other people saw and you know, feel free to borrow other people's uh, movies and that kind of thing. And also, we're looking forward to seeing that because there could be movies that we never even – that caught our eye yet. And one of you guys will tweet it out to us. We're like, oh, okay, there we go. Let's watch that. Yeah. I, You know, it's funny. Some of them I'm looking at, that one with the uh, – just because the way the way I tend to watch movies that I – the anything you can, you can do, I can do better. That will be a lot, probably one of the more challenging ones for me because pretty much I've tried to like actually seek out like all the Kane Hodder films. And all the uh-huh. all the Robert England films, even if they're little, little bit parts, usually if I see it like featuring Robert England, I usually watch it. So it's like I may have I may have to delve deep a little bit into like maybe something that like Gunnar Hansen did or. Oh yeah, I mean, you could do like even I, I would consider, um, Jamie from Halloween. Oh right, oh she's been in ton. Yeah, oh that's true because yeah we that, yeah now that you know that, that you said that too. In case you guys didn't do that one yet, obviously yeah the icon may not necessarily be the 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 killer or the the, the right. villain. I mean that's true because like I I'd say I argue that that Tommy Jarvis is an and really pick you can pick any one of the three Tommy Jarvis. Jamie Lee Curtis. Right. I mean there, there you go. She has done some horror films that I had never seen, like that Road Games I just right. watched on yeah. Shutter. You know, I had never seen that yeah, one. Yeah, and she's, she's been in that. yeah, and did some earlier ones in her you know, when she was early in the Scream Queens that I mean, granted everyone's known about them, but maybe you didn't see it and as the time. You know, so yeah, that's true. I you know, I didn't even think about it. See, this is this is why this is a good thing that we put this segment in because you know, you may be stuck on a few and that's a good way to look at it. You know, most people probably We'll kind of narrow it down to, oh, I'm going to look at, okay, let's see, Freddy, Leatherface, Jason, you know, but. And I, I realized that 31 films in 31 days is tough. And that's why it's a challenge. And that's why a lot of these challenges are out there. But, you know, if you, uh, if you start early, started early and, or finished late, you know, nobody's going to tell on you. Yeah. We won't, and we won't even know. <laughs> yeah. We won't even know. So just, uh, yeah, just send those in. I think that'll be a fun little. Thing to do I mean, in all honesty, I'd, I'm going to be pressed for time just because with the with the move and everything coming up and all our events, it's like I'm like, okay, when am I going to get time to watch 31 films <laughs> in here? But I do have a couple of f- two flights, which is good. So that that'll that'll make uh probably get a couple in then. 
So Right, there you go. So we're going to save our beer pairing and trivia next week when we actually have a movie to pair it with. Uh, this is kind of... Originally, it was going to be a mini-sode, but it kind of turned into a full episode. Uh, just kind of an unconventional one. But uh, we hope you guys are having a great October so far. we got a few more weeks left, so lots of fun to be had, lots of good content to be had, and we'll see you soon. Yes, and remember, keep your eye out for the Candy Corn Scarecrow. <laughs> Thank you.